into the grey mouse company The finest colony on the rim We've heard rumours about your bravery Let's hope you live up to them The prisoner we have assigned to you Is certainly one of a kind And you must escort them to the extraction Hey guys, I'm Kirko. Welcome back to RimWorld. Welcome back to the Grey Mouse Company. And uh, let me tell you of this awesome thing when you go ahead and you record two episodes of RimWorld, which I did today, and then you realize that none of those two episodes had any microphone volume at all, apparently. So. Good stuff, right? There's no microphone recording for the whole hour and something something that I recorded these two episodes. So, <sighs> it's great. It's great. I love it. So, what we're going to be doing today and for tomorrow's episode, it's going to be slightly different than, you know, the traditional stuff. I'm going to narrate over what happened and that will also make the episodes way uh, shorter. And also, I'm going to fit them in with a couple of uh, stories. Uh, I believe... I think like three stories per episode, three story updates. So you're going to see some of that as well. But otherwise, I'm going to go through what we have actually done in this episode. Just explain a bit and, you know, cut it into maybe like a 10 minute episode or something like that. We'll, we'll see. Now let's listen to a story update on Stevie. Stevie is still on the road. As he was moving, he saw a person on the road who looked injured. As he got closer to talk to her, two people jumped from the side of the road and attacked Stevie. Luckily, Stevie noticed them before they shot their guns, and he managed to dodge the two bullets. He pulled his gun and shot one of the ambushers dead. The other one was still alive. He shot another bullet and hit Stevie in the eye. In immense pain, Stevie managed to shoot his rifle before he collapsed out of pain. Stevie having some training in medicine from school, managed to remove the bullet out of his eye, but the bullet went through and cut his eye out, so it fell out of its socket. He passed out of disgust. When he woke up, he realized that the injured girl ran away, and Stevie's eye was still on the floor. He decided to put a bandage over his missing eye. He continued along the road carefully as to not spring another ambush. He also was still in heavy pain but managed to power through. He was hoping that the Grey Mouse Company will help him with his eye when he gets there. In the end, Stevie is now psychically sensitive, 16-year-old mercenary with a missing eye. In any case, let us, let us begin. The first off, you know, I was just happy with this episode that finally the toxic fallout is done, we got a lot of food and a lot of stuff, so I was like, hey, Something bad's about to happen, you know? Something bad is gonna happen because things are going too good. But I don't think anything really too bad happened. So I started working on a new growing zone uh, that we could uh, plant potatoes in. And also, I was like slightly afraid what might happen uh, with more raiders showing up. So I started uh, walling in our Xenon Iron Turbine first because that thing is basically our most valuable item so i decided you know what that thing definitely gets its own wall and then when i started building that wall i was like you know what we have that wall what if we just you know start working on walls all around the place that might be a good idea so i started first wor working on the wall for our new growing zone that i was building and then slowly we started expanding to the rest of the stuff as well and uh right there were some boomalobes that showed up, so we had Throngni go hunt them down, and that was some extra meat that we definitely, definitely need. I mean, while we did get those works in the last episode, we still needed more, more food. You know, always need more food, because because we can, uh, we can then after we butcher them, we can finally start working on some meat survival meals, right? Because uh, those things are gonna last forever. Now. Also, I wanted to extend our, well, not exactly kill box, but our defenses that we have right now. I kind of uh, wanted to work on those, so 
uh, I started working on that. But luckily for me, uh, speaking of food, luckily for me, there was a trade ship and we bought, I think, like 1200 shrimp meat. Yeah, 1200 shrimp meat and some other stuff as well. So I was like, okay, we're, we're, we're there. I did spend all of our silver on it, which was like 2300 silver, I think, something like that. Uh, but we we got enough food. I said, you know what? It's time to make those meat survival meals. It's good. Let's do it Let's do it. Otherwise um, I think we got some more food from drop pods uh, if I remember correctly watermelons or something like that Yeah, we, we got some of that. Otherwise just working on walls and uh, slowly butchering and cooking and then uh, we also started uh, taking those uh, mechanoids apart which was giving us a lot of bones and uh, while well, we haven't started working on turning those bones into bone marrow it looked like we're gonna have a ton of bone marrow to um, have uh, for traveling purposes because that one lasts for a long time now there was also an experiment i tried uh, because everybody started eating my meat survival meals because it gives them like plus five buff that they ate a meat meal so they definitely started prioritizing that over this uh, simple meals. And I wanted to have these meals for traveling when I wanted my people to eat the simple meals here. So I set the, everybody on just simple meal diet. And I was hoping they, would, uh, they wouldn't take the, meal, uh, the meat meals. But that didn't work. They still took the meat meals. So I started forbidding them. And, uh, <laughs> and people had to be forced to eat them simple meals but you know sometimes you just gotta do something stupid like that to make it work you know i also wanted to figure out exactly what happened to viola who went missing some time ago we lost her in the desert so uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna read more from her backstory because she had some story updates for us and uh, maybe from that we can find out exactly what has happened after traveling the rim for any signs of civilization, there was a small town. It was small, but it seemed very busy. In what seemed to be the center of the town was a tavern. When she entered, everything went silent. Everyone was looking at her, but she did care about the looks of others. She only cared for answers. Everything went back to normal. There was lively music playing, people chatting and gambling. She sat at the bar and a bartender came to her asking, what drink will it be? She asked for a large cup of beer. No one really knew that she was a heavyweight drinker, able to hold her own in a drinking competition. While drinking, she overheard a conversation. Two beast people talking about a battle that happened. I heard that there was a really big battle at a base with a Grey Mouse company. Yeah, a lot of people died during that battle over some researcher. The Grey Mouse company, Viola thought to herself. Maybe they are connected to the ambushes that happened to my group. I have to find out. So she paid the bartender, saying thanks, and left town to go see who the Grey Mouse were. Well, she definitely did find out about us, but <laughs> eventually went missing in the desert. I wonder why. Uh, we also built more walls. Yeah, more walls on the left side with a door as well which wasn't the the smartest thing but hey you know kind of have to hold have to have doors right i also started a new small ish plantation where i wanted to have just uh what are they called uh the smoke leaf yes because i figure out you know our people are breaking a lot maybe just maybe if i gave them some drugs they might feel better <laughs> just maybe also, I think at this point, Stevie picked up a new helmet for himself and just he just looks ridiculous. Maybe he did that in the previous episode. I don't re actually remember if he did. Good. More power to you, Stevie. But otherwise, yeah, he, he got something, <laughs> something crazy. So, yeah, he did that. Wait, was it this episode? Or was it the last episode that we lost the colonist? No, we did lose it in the last episode, right? Yeah, I was almost afraid that I missed that, but... Yeah, I think Stevie got that helmet in the previous episode, and we also lost the patient in the last episode, which... Which sucked. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shouldn't have killed him, but... Hey, you know, shit like that happens sometimes, so... 
Uh, also, right, there's a question for you guys. Peggy, our Android, still has weak valves and it's severe weak valves. And I was trying to figure out exactly what I can build on that Android part station. And I don't really have any idea what I can build to replace that. So if you guys could let me know, I would really, really appreciate that. So yes, please do let me know <laughs> if you could. Uh, right, we also started working on a wall down south with a new entrance and uh, some embrasures because we kind of, I felt like we needed that, you know, more than one entrance. And at the end, I just started placing down, uh, what is it, all those paths, just a bunch and a bunch of paths that we can use, you know, when we go to uh, those embrasures to defend something, if we have paths rather than sand that we have to walk on we can be faster and we can get our asses there real fast so that's what i wanted to do and right uh, at the end we also finally started getting the mushrooms in i think we got like over a thousand mushrooms but at this point we didn't really have meat anymore to combine the mushrooms and the meat to create survival meals which was kind of a problem so we're gonna have to somehow get more meat to use all those mushrooms and rice and all the stuff that we're getting uh, right to actually get some food or you know, we can always combine it with the goblin meat. I'm sure people wouldn't mind that right? I'm sure they'd be just Just happy We also have another update on Kaijuki It's been nine weeks since the incident sixth entry heat and sand It has been almost three weeks since I hit the road on this barren ball of sand and of course some things didn't go as planned Upon our arrival at the orbital space station, the captain thanked me for intervening in a battle and wished me good luck on my search. He even gave me three packet survival meals as well as a few credits for a shuttle ticket. I never would have expected so much help from a stranger who I was stealing from before those androids showed up. He just shrugged as I brought that up and said something along the lines of, meh, it's nothing compared to the fact my baby is still intact. So I just accepted his generosity and made my way to the shuttle. It dropped me off in a settlement inside a small mountain range called the Blue Donkey Mountains. A rather strange name. I still wonder what the story behind it is. I asked around a bit and joined up with a caravan heading towards an outpost called the Smelly Boneskin, which sounds more like a tribe name than an outpost, but whatever. They told me that we'd uh, follow the road eastwards to the Coca Mountains and would head north of road in Abenero's Delusion Range till we arrived at their destination. From there, I should follow the road northwards until it ends in the Camriotro scrubland. From there, I should head northeast until I find a river and then follow said river into the mountains and voila, there's the Asari outpost. Everything went well until we were attacked by stick people. Their skin was red violent, colored with white marks painted upon it. They were equipped with pole arms and metal armor, screaming something about us trespassing, that the king would dispose of us and a lot of for the high. Most of them had heads in the shape of a hammer, but there were also some with rather round heads acting like the leaders, and some with rather long heads armed with crossbows. They took out almost half of the caravan, but ran off after we sent their round head leaders to the dust. We treated their worst wounds and traveled to the tribal village on the southern end of the road leading to the Camriotro scrubland. The caravan will probably stay here for a few weeks to treat the wounded and assess the damage done. Looks like I will have to travel without them, since I don't want to waste any time. Which means I have to somehow get myself some supplies for the rest of the journey. I'll deal with that tomorrow and rest up, not like I'll be able to sleep much with those nightmares haunting me. But eh, maybe I can squeeze out one or two hours of sleep. Uh, in any case, I think that was... Oh, you know what I did at the end? I also started uh, working on... Um, new helmets for everybody. I uh, I added Addison to start working on advanced helmets because we were starting to get a bunch of plasteel from the mecha noids that we were tearing apart and I decided to start making some steel helmets, steel advanced helmets for everybody because uh, you know we need protection and while Stevie is wearing that weird thing on his head I was like maybe if we made some more helmets let's do that and that thing takes like 10 plasteel and then 40 uh, of anything we have and we had steel at that point and we also we also had uh, like I think it's like two components per each but yeah 
that will do for today's episode. I know it's shorter one. I know that's just the way it is, but <laughs> uh, you know, it's either that or I go record it again. And if it was just one episode, I would record it again, but it was two episodes. So that's like one hour of everything that happened. And I had to delete all of that and record it again. It's like, you know what? You guys don't usually, like, if I look at average watch time, it's like 40% of a video is average watch time. So I think out of, uh, like, the 30-minute video, you guys usually watch, like, 13 minutes on average. So, hey, this video should be hitting something like that soon. So that should be fun, right? In any case, just remember, next episode will be like this uh, as well. Let me know what you think of it. <laughs> and let me know about those uh, weak valves. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Talk around.